On the last few shows, I've been messing around with Smart RTA, the new iPhone app from Rational Acoustics. It takes the power of Spectrum, Spectrograph, and the SPL views you have on a desktop and puts them in the palm of your hand. And this is great because you can't always take your measurement microphone with the XLR cable and run it out somewhere during the middle of a show or quick on setup. So if you just need a quick check of what the spectrum is looking like as well as the SPL, it's really cool to have that. And in the pro version, you can now actually calibrate the microphone to make sure it is giving you accurate SPL data. It's nice to have this in a mobile format and a phone. How can I make sure it's giving me good data? And the answer is to calibrate it against a known reference. And I'm going to walk you through that step by step. And we're going to calibrate the microphone itself. So if you haven't done that before, you're going to learn that today. And then we're going to see how to place the iPhone and get specifically within the Smart RT app, know where the settings are, and get it dialed in so you can get really good actual data. Let's jump in. All right, let's start from the very beginning with our calibration procedure. What we're doing here is putting a known value from a measurement microphone at a point in space, and we're going to calibrate it, and then we're going to put our phone's microphone right next to it, and then have it match, because we don't have a calibrator that can fit on the iPhone. But if we can get it as close as we possibly can to a known value, it's going to be able to work for our purposes. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Today, I'm working in Smart Suite. You could just as easily do this in smart uh, LE as well as RT. So if you want to have a, a more affordable option, you can definitely go that route. But the materials you're going to need is a copy of any of those pieces of software here. And so I'm running Suite. You're going to need a measurement microphone. I'm using the Isomcon EMX7150. Uh, I've got four of them. They work great. Uh, but if you've got the little Behringer guy, the DBX, the Sonarworks one, all those are going to work. You just need a calibrator, which is the next piece of gear that's going to be able to fit on this microphone. So mine shipped with a couple of different adapters. I have the Isomcon SC1, and it's great. And as long as it fits snug on your microphone, you're going to be in good shape. So let me show you the calibration procedure, which is actually going to be the same as if you're going to calibrate that microphone for a show anyway. And then I'm going to show you how to use the Smart RTA app to calibrate against it. All right, so here we are. I've done a little bit of setup already, but all I've added is these inputs called mic in and loop in because I was doing a measurement earlier. But my interface, if I go to config, IO config, is the Audient uh, Evo 16, which is what I'm using. And I've selected it here, and I've only checked inputs 5 and 6 because that's all I need to use for what's going on here. And I've done a friendly name. I renamed it Mic In, just so in other parts of the software, you know what that is. That just happens to be analog in 5. And right now, I'm doing about 40 dB of gain. Now, I'm doing that much because I don't want to have to crank the loudspeaker behind me up super loud to get a decent level. I can go ahead getting it right with the microphone just so I don't have to run it super loud. And what we're going to be doing at the calibration is this column, the calibration offset. So that procedure is going to be placing the calibrator over the microphone. And what it does is it plays a one, uh, one kilohertz sine tone at 94 dBA. There are other levels you can play it at, but most often it's 94 dBA. And it has a seal around the capsule and a known distance. And we can use that as a reference level, no matter what the preamp gain is. And so just be careful that once you calibrate, do not adjust your preamp level for the remainder of that day or show, or your data is going to be off. Okay, so let's go through that process. So I'm here, I'm going to click calibrate. And I'm going to select the input channel. I go to mic in. Since I have the audio interface, Rational Acoustics has built uh, an API that can talk to this interface and control the preamp gain digitally, which is really handy. It can also do this with the Roland Octopre, uh, but don't be alarmed if you're doing it with your Focusrite or whatever else interface and you don't have it. That's totally fine. Uh, today, I'm doing about 40 dB of gain. And then we're going to click Calibrate here in a second after we place our calibrator on the microphone. That's going to give us our offset value. So let me place it on there and we'll run the test. Okay, now I have the calibrator on the microphone. It has an on-off switch as well as a selector that says 94 or 110. I want to make sure and do 94. So that is on there. It's playing a sine tone. We can see the incoming level coming in at a very steady level. I would just also make sure that when you're doing the calibration process, if you are in a noisy environment, try to get them to turn the uh, vacuum cleaner off if you can, or try not to have a bunch of wind noise or other vibrations happening. And so we're going to hit calibrate.
And there we are. So it measured a level of negative 14.9 dBFS RMS. So that's the uh, digital full scale level. And you need to convert that to an SPL readout. So that's what's happening is we are adding 108 dB to that number to get to 94 dBA. So that microphone is absolutely hearing 94 dBA in the can. And so now it can use that as a reference against anything else. You see, here we are. Now we're calibrated. And I've already gone to the top on real-time mode, selected mic in, made sure I'm on DB SPLA slow, and it's showing me I'm, I'm registering now at 94 dBA, which is what we want. Great, so now I'm gonna take it off, and then we'll jump over to how to calibrate my iPhone with Smart RTA. So I've got the app running right now, and it's basically in this default state. So on the left-hand side, you can see it. So now what I've done is placed the microphone capsule of the EMX M1150 really, really close to the iPhone. It's on SPLA slow, the averaging is fast, and the banding is at 148. And I am now gonna go back over to the phone and start changing some settings and show you where the microphone settings are. So when the app boots up, it's gonna use the front microphone. So if you're holding the phone or you're taking a picture in front of you with, the, with the, the regular camera, not the selfie camera, there's a microphone there and it's at the front. And the default value is to increase it by 120 dB. And that's what we're gonna to wanna to adjust. Right now, I have the bottom of the phone. The bottom microphone is what's closest to my uh, EMX7150 microphone. So I'm gonna choose that. And there we are. So I want to make sure and do that. So that's step number one is get the, get the iPhone close to it. We're now going to go to set calibration. And this will be a similar menu that we just experienced in Smart Sweep. But instead of having a calibrator on top of it, we're going to match the readout in this menu to what we see in Smart Sweep. Okay, now I've selected the right microphone, the bottom microphone, and the calibration offset is right now is at 120. Let's see how close we are. And then I can adjust it to get us even closer. So it looks like 72.9 versus 74.1. So just a little bit over a decibel. And, and basically the phone is, is higher. So we need to, need to lower the calibration offset on the phone. So let's try bring it down from 120 to 119 and see where we are. And isn't that awesome? Now we're within 0 0.1, 0 0.2 dB of each other on that microphone versus the other playing pink noise. And so now we are calibrated. So as long as when I boot up the app, make sure I have the right microphone selected and the right offset, I can now move this around. So I would walk around with this in my hand, basically upside down, making sure I'm not cupping the bottom microphone. And you can see I've actually taken my case off. And I think it'd be an interesting later video to do like, okay, how much all of this is affected by having it on the table with a case on, all that kind of stuff. But we want to make sure that that microphone, just like we want to have it in a true free field, like our measurement microphone is there. That's how you calibrate it so you can trust the readouts. And now you have something mobile that you can take around with you and get some useful data on your gigs.